No one saw it coming. Not the analysts, not the tech journalists, not even the intelligence communities who've spent decades monitoring every lab, factory, and clean room across East Asia. And yet, in complete silence, behind layers of secrecy and deliberate misdirection, one of the most radical technological shifts in human history unfolded, not in California, or Munich, or Tokyo, but deep beneath the surface of Shanghai, where concrete and steel conceal what may be the most important manufacturing sites on Earth. It didn't begin with an announcement. There was no grand unveiling, no press release, no keynote. It began with a leak, a tremor in the data, a crack in the wall of silence. And then the realization followed like a thunderclap. The age of silicon, the very bedrock of the modern digital world, may have just ended. What has emerged is not just faster, smaller, or more efficient. What has emerged is a complete rejection of the old model, a clean, surgical severing of the tether to electricity as the medium for information transmission. In its place is light itself. Photons, the very particles that define the speed limit of the universe, are now being harnessed, guided, and etched into chips that no longer rely on electrons to carry data. This is not a refinement, this is a replacement. Photonic computing doesn't just accelerate processes, it destroys the barriers that have constrained them. With no resistance and almost no heat, information moves through these circuits with a fluidity that electrical systems simply cannot match. The physical limitations that once forced chipmakers into ever more complex, costly, and miniaturized designs are rendered irrelevant. There are no longer thermodynamic ceilings to shatter, no diminishing returns to fear. What exists now is a new frontier, untouched and exponentially scalable. And this is in theory, it's already operational. According to classified reports circulating among global intelligence partners, a single photonic wafer can host upwards of 5,000 AI-optimized cores. Each core is capable of operating with speeds and efficiencies that dwarf today's most advanced silicon processors. GPT-7 queries, models requiring vast computational power, are executed effortlessly, like routine calculations. Tasks that once strained data center clusters can now be run on devices that consume less energy than a light bulb. But the most staggering detail isn't the power, it's the process. For years, China was believed to be trapped beneath a technological glass ceiling. The Western world, through carefully coordinated sanctions and export controls, had effectively cornered the most critical tools of modern chip making, particularly the extreme ultraviolet EUV lithography machines produced solely by ASML in the Netherlands. These machines, the size of small houses and worth hundreds of millions of dollars each, were seen as the bottleneck. Without them, no nation could hope to compete at the bleeding edge. And yet, against every expectation, Chinese engineers did not circumvent the blockade with espionage or backdoor deals. They bypassed it entirely. What Western technologists dismissed as outdated, deep, ultraviolet lithography or DUV was re-engineered and perfected. While it cannot etch the ultra-fine features demanded by traditional chips, DUV proved ideally suited to photonic circuit fabrication, where light itself is both the medium and the measure. The result is a chip manufacturing process that exists completely outside the Western ecosystem. A sovereign supply chain. A self-contained world, immune to disruption. What's more, the fabrication sites themselves are reportedly some of the most secure industrial facilities in existence, housed in subterranean bunkers beneath China's coastal megacities, equipped to function autonomously in the event of conflict or embargo. And as the world scrambled to understand what had happened, another realization emerged. This wasn't just a performance revolution, it was an energy revolution. Today's AI boom has created a paradox. While our models grow ever more powerful, they are also becoming unsustainable. The servers that train, run, and store artificial intelligence consume obscene amounts of electricity, much of it simply to cool the chips they contain. By some estimates, over $30 billion a year is spent just to offset the heat generated by silicon. That number is growing. It is a hidden cost of intelligence, one that comes in carbon, cash, and climate. But photonic chips don't generate heat in the same way. Some reports suggest they operate at temperatures so low they would register colder than winter air in the Russian Far East. 
If true, this represents not just a technological victory, but an ecological one. Data centers that today require entire buildings for cooling infrastructure could soon shrink to the size of closets. The cost of operating large AI models would plummet, training times would collapse, energy consumption could drop by orders of magnitude. This change is not theoretical, the market has already reacted. ASML, the once unassailable juggernaut of advanced chip manufacturing, has reportedly seen its stock value fall by 27% since these developments came to light. Their EUV machines, once symbols of Western superiority, now stand threatened with obsolescence for high-performance applications. In the face of photonic design, they are over-engineered relics. Their lenses, mirrors, and extreme ultraviolet sources, brilliant feats of engineering, are no longer necessary. Huawei and SMIC, the companies behind this breakthrough, are not only gaining technological ground, they are gaining economic momentum. Unverified intelligence suggests that over $300 billion in photonic chip pre-orders have been placed, primarily by BRICS-lined nations. Brazil, India, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, countries that have long chafed under the constraints of Western tech hegemony are now aligning around a new axis of innovation. In response, the U.S. government has entered crisis mode. Emergency meetings have been convened, intelligence reports have been declassified, analyzed, and redacted again. The Department of Commerce is weighing unprecedented restrictions while the Pentagon models scenarios that were, until recently, confined to speculative fiction. For the first time in decades, the technological dominance of the United States is no longer taken for granted. Morgan well, recently, the NASDAQ, the Spidermic AI infrastructure company, has seen significant market losses. Intel's new Megafab project in Ohio, a cornerstone of America's effort to reclaim chip independence, is reportedly being re-evaluated, its assumptions no longer viable. Cloud providers are shifting. Even Microsoft, a pillar of global computing, is reportedly exploring new data center locations in Mumbai and Johannesburg sites strategically positioned to access cheaper energy and unrestricted access to photonic hardware. The consequences are cascading. Roadmaps are collapsing. Strategic forecasts are being revised hourly. Investment portfolios are being rewritten by the second. And even as this upheaval unfolds, whispers are growing louder of a second breakthrough. Inside a heavily guarded quantum lab in Hefei, China, researchers are reportedly finalizing a superconducting chip that would render photonics merely a stepping stone. Early indicators suggest processing speeds and coherence times that push beyond what was previously believed possible. If confirmed, it would mean China has not just closed the gap, it has lapped the field. For the first time since the dawn of the digital era, the West is no longer setting the pace. The world's technological gravity is shifting, and the axis of power long thought fixed is now tilting with it. This is not evolution, this is rupture. The world is not changing incrementally, it is changing absolutely. And those who do not adapt, those who continue to bet on yesterday's hardware, yesterday's strategies, yesterday's dominance, will find themselves left behind relics of an era that no longer apply. The Silicon Age is over, the Age of Light has begun, and beyond it, something even faster is coming. The only question left is, who will survive what comes next?